we will, sorry. We'll have yet another rearrangement of the program because from the Bulgarian Fund of the Funds, which is the new umbrella fund of all the funds in Bulgaria, um, and, and, and we basically uh, were trying to convince them to um, deliver a presentation together with a few other uh, renowned financial institutions in Bulgaria. Uh, but we didn't have a confirmation until just a few minutes ago when um, Ms. Angelina Tudorova arrived with a presentation. So we are going to give her the floor to start. Um, she's the director of the Fund of the Funds. And um, we're going to hear what is available at the moment. And then with Asia, uh, we will hijack the floor <laughs> as moderators uh, because we also want to share a few rather conceptual things regarding uh, the, the planning for financial instruments. Uh, because there are a few things we are complotting to, to, to promote and propose very soon. Angelina, please. Thank you. Uh, and if you don't mind, I will continue in Bulgarian. Uh, Zdravete. If, if, okay. I'm Angelina Yordanova. I'm a director of uh, this Fund of Funds, a structure I will tell you about um, briefly, but first I would like to thank the hosts for um, inviting me and the presentations, the great presentations that I've been able to watch online, interesting best practices from the region, etc. My uh, presentation will not go in depth. Uh, into the topic of today's uh, conference, but I would uh, try to give you some perspective on uh, the financial opportunities, funding opportunities. You are representatives of a sector who's which is familiar with uh, different funding instruments, but maybe not so much with the, my, the financial instruments I will uh, present to you. Um, we are speaking about funding that needs to be returned. In Bulgaria, we have such a fund, which is a national institution, and it um, manages the European funds in the country. May I get some help with uh, changing the slides, please? Maybe I'm just uh, exuding energy that technology doesn't like. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Generally, these are uh, the European Structural Investment Funds and the National Co Financing that uh, um, Bulgaria provides through its budget. We have uh, funding under four pro operational programs, co competition, environment, uh, human resources, and regions in growth. The funds that we receive are 600 million euro. What we are doing is actually creating uh, specific instruments for financing specific policies using intermediaries who use partners, private investors, and out of these 600 million um, euro, the final uh, beneficiaries uh, would receive more than <laughs> 1 billion 300 million euro. This is the magic, so to say, of our work. We are trying to attract private resource. For those of you who know the Juncker plan uh, is to the idea is to attract a private um, capital with public capital in order to finance uh, public initiatives. Why are we using uh, this type of um, reinvesting and where is our energy efficient, the energy efficiency? These are the programs and based on um, independent analysis, 
we decide where the public resource should go. So to this money, we should attract private capital from different market participants. These are different funds with different shares from uh, the launch to the phase of growth. These are guarantees in the sphere of uh, innovation and energy efficiency. Several Bulgarian banks uh, have applied to uh, have access to the um, guarantee that so that they could provide uh, capital to small and medium enterprises to develop projects in these fields. This is our microfinancing urban development fund. And there are also means there for energy efficiency for single family households and uh, university students' dorms. The program that you've probably heard about uh, for uh, blocks, uh, we are not in charge of it presently. We're in charge of uh, single family households and uh, student dorms. In human uh, resources, we have microfinancing and uh, insurances, gar guarantees. And here uh, we have a very clear focus on social enterprises, uh, different um, groups and social policies that the European Union would like to support. In terms of environment, we have water sector, water fund. We are working with the European Bank for um, Restoration and Development and also the this waste instrument. We are trying to collect a wide um, feedback from the market. What are the needs? What would the projects be like? What would what obstacles would uh, those uh, projects uh, meet? Again, this financing, um, the, the investment should be sustainable. It should be uh, sustainable in terms of uh, market, the market, self-sustainable, not uh, dependent on subsidizing all the time. So they, they have to be um, also a source of uh, income. So we are in the middle of uh, market activities and uh, subsidized activities. I think there are a lot of uh, benefits. I'll go back to them. There are market defects and uh, which require um, public financial investor. So these means after we get them back, we reinvest them. So there's a cycle of reinvesting constantly which is another benefit. Also, when the funds are returned, people are more careful with the money. They're more efficient. They want return on investment. And also the expertise of the private sector could be used. My unit in the fund, right now it's a, a direction. It's a you, you can ask us all types of questions and we will provide information to you. In cooperation with, with the European Investment Bank, we, we were created as a unit to su for support. All types of inquiries and uh, should receive a response. I wouldn't call it consultation services, but uh, advice and uh, response. I'm here for questions, especially in terms of the, the area of energy efficiency, because there is a new um, term, a new program period, and I'll be very interesting to hear your input. Um, 
Thank you very much. I'm very happy this presentation happened, although it wasn't announced in advance, and it gave us the idea that there are things that are uh, about to be launched that are being prepared, and there are going to be new instruments out there to support these programs, whether it's in ren the renovation of buildings or uh, heating and ventilation. Asya, now it's us. I'm going to begin. I'm sorry, but I had to prepare the most boring possible presentation. It is text only, which goes against all the rules of PowerPoint presentation. But just as an icebreaker, I needed to uh, give some um, uh, points to think about together with my colleagues from Habitat. that maybe I tried to simplify the stuff. I hope it, I didn't get to oversimplification, but it was on purpose because I really um, want everyone to be able to grasp certain very basic concepts that I want to get back to. The idea is that the, at the end, we're gonna have financial instruments that are totally accessible and comprehensive for everyone. Um, what would be the aim of a financial instrument? Well, basically, we have been opposing the 100% grants that have been distributed in the field of energy efficiency and heating in Bulgaria. This might be sometimes fine for certain pilot projects, but we were witnessing massive programs. Uh, and this is a perverse incentive that basically has kicked out certain um, other businesses like ESCO uh, companies from the market, didn't, didn't provide access to this sort of uh, business initiatives for many years. And it, uh, it taught the, 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 the beneficiaries um, that everything is a present, so uh, they're not even incentivized to uh, follow up the public procurement procedures, uh, to be involved, to ask for more transparency, to ask for more cost efficiency of everything that has been taken um, uh, over. Um, again, very basic concept. What we have witnessed so far in Bulgaria, uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but as I said, we had the programs that had 100% grant or are going to offer 100% grant. This was the National Renovation Program, which renovated multifamily housing. Um, really at 100% grant without a single Bulgarian LEF contribution from the household. Only the time of, of a few enthusiastic people from, from each building that were uh, trying to uh, get everything together. We have now the LIFE project and the OP environment, the operative program environment, that are going to work on, the heat, uh, on uh, these uh, heating projects that were presented in the second panel today. And they're also targeting 100% grant, which to a certain extent for very poor households was more or less fine. But we also seen the plans work on um, quite big systems and well-off homes where uh, we believe that own contribution, even if it's not a, a big portion of, of the money, would lead to much more efficiency. Um, on the other hand, there was this kind of a hybrid instrument that included um, subsidy from uh, um, Kozodui Decommissioning Fund. Uh, it, it had like, th um, the, it, it was restarted three times over the years because it was a very successful instrument and it, it combined um, a very old and well-known formula to all of us, providing um, a small portion of grant together with a credit component. Uh, at some point, the, it was considered too much of stimulus for the banking sector because the interest rates were quite high and, well, but let's not get into, uh, into the details of that. The Bulgarian Energy Efficiency Fund, Microfund, the lines that you're going to hear about from Habitat for Humanity, their programs for um, certain um, housing renovations, uh, and certain consumer credit lines are 
On the other uh, part of the spectrum, they provide only um, uh, credits. Sometimes they uh, might be also interest-free, like the stuff that um, Habitat has been doing. In, in all the other cases, uh, they use, um, uh, they, they use uh, the, the regular uh, or higher interest rates than the market ones. Um, we need, when we think of financial instruments, we, uh, we realize we need to think of three levels of uh, uh, when we talk about financial instruments. Because when we were talking to um, colleagues from uh, big financial institutions regarding what would be upcoming, their main consideration was actually where are the funds going to come from? This, sorry, um, th this part here. We, as NGOs, see that uh, and claim that there is a little bit of um, inefficiency sometimes in the way funds are getting distributed. Uh, sometimes they, um, programs like OP Environment had to wait from 2014 until now to basically start their clean energy access and to start distributing funds. So uh, we are more concerned on how the financial instruments and how the programs, even the, the grant programs and the financial instruments, would be managed. So this is the level of who's going to manage the collected funds. And then are the, the final beneficiaries and the final users of these funds uh, going to like it and have trust and, have, and be willing to, to basically uh, use this money and go into these programs? Um, when it comes to the where the funds are going to come from, uh, they're, again, very, very basic stuff. We can have it through our taxes. We can have it through instruments like market instruments like um, emission trading schemes. Uh, we can have it through debt instruments and the contribution, for example, if we can leverage uh, private funds from, uh, from banking institutions when certain amounts of public funds are being provided. Um, and we can uh, also have certain examples of direct investments, which is, for example, the ESCO companies that can uh, go on risk basis and fund certain projects. Or um, other example is the sale of the so-called air rights, uh, which, which is something that never gained momentum in Bulgaria uh, when people in multifamily buildings are selling their attic space, which usually very often in the Bulgarian buildings is not a very nice area. It's just a place where everybody dumped everything for decades. Um, and uh, an entrepreneur, a company, would take over the space, build an additional floor, sell the, the dwellings that are um, provided there, and with the income would also finance the renovation and the energy efficiency measures in the building. Who would manage the funds? Everything that we hear recently when we are in talks with um, national authorities is aiming for funds to be distributed through banks, through commercial banks, which is fine, but it's not enough because very often um, they are really poor families who would never qualify in the Excel sheet of a credit inspector in a bank. They just don't have the credit, uh, the, the proper credit dossier in order to uh, be able to, um, to get any funds. Uh, we believe that there is space uh, and, and big potential um, also for the inclusion of non-banking financial institutions. Um, uh, we believe that there is space, for example, for municipalities, especially the large ones, definitely have the capacity to develop their simple funds that can, be, can then support um, uh, families and, and uh, households. Uh, and this is this is something which is nowhere in the pipeline of the plans of the Bulgarian authorities. I'm sure that in the region, maybe in the Czech Republic, there would be fantastic examples for that. Um, but in Bulgaria, there's none of it. And at the end, um, the the final beneficiaries, be it uh, of the grants or or the credits, um, what we think the formula should be, um, and, and we are kind of trying to structure now certain positions with uh, upcoming strategies in, in Bulgaria for renovation and for heating programs. We need instruments 
that for the final consumer would be simple so that they can really get the idea what they are going to be paying back for how long, how this, uh, this amount is actually uh, being derived. Uh, predictable. People really fear uh, of um, uh, instruments that are fluctuating too much. They prefer, uh, I would say, um, Final, final consumers in Bulgaria would trust more if they know my monthly installment, like in a, in, a, in a very simple consumer credit, would be this amount of money monthly. And I need to prepare to, to, to um, contribute with that. They need to be affordable, which means that no one should stay excluded with the fragmented ownership of, house of, um, uh, of dwellings in Bulgaria, including the, the one in multifamily buildings. It's really hard. You have a whole area of um, um, households with very di different income levels. And as I said, there are definitely households that would never qualify in the, um, uh, in the Excel sheet of a, of a credit expert in a bank. While, on the other hand, they're pretty well-off households. Um, and if we provide a 100% subsidy, we are really uh, providing perverse incentives for, for, many, uh, for many people. Um, with uh, with uh, Asia, we have been talking for quite a while that um, it could be uh, quite attractive for people, despite the fact that we already uh, live in, in times where uh, interest rates are pretty low. But people fear that this may change in a while, like the next financial crisis or whatever, and things may skyrocket again. Um, with, with insecurity and the memories here in Bulgaria with high levels of inflation, with high level of, um, of interest rates are pretty fresh and people really would mistrust anything that goes, ups and down, uh, goes up and down. Uh, if we can provide interest-free loans for people, this would be a small contribution to be covered for the, for, uh, for the managing institutions. Uh, to cover their operational costs, to cover uh, the interest rates that a banking institution would be interested to get. Um, in the same time, most of the measures that can be implemented in a household usually pay back sometimes for less than a year, sometimes in a very in rather complex project. I have rarely seen anything that pays longer than eight years. There, there are, of course, such projects, but uh, very often in about four to six years, the more complex measures uh, can, can pay back. Uh, and um, uh, we believe that uh, um, depending on the type of the project and the measures that are installed, um, we, we can have instruments that are um, interest-free for a certain amount of time. And this is completely affordable. It would really be attractive for the final consumers and it would provide um, the necessity only for um, much smaller leverage of public funds compared to the 100% grants that are distributed at the moment. And voila, that's it. And um, uh, I want to give the floor to Asia uh, with um, the, their very interesting examples of um, um, kind of small financial vehicles that they distribute through Habitat and uh, also partner with uh, a fund called Microfund. Uh, and it's interested to hear the results. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, this is uh, an old, a somewhat old presentation. And frankly, Gennady and me spontaneously decided to tell you a few things. I decided it is good to have a few pictures in what I'm going to say. Now, the stress here in the title you see is a partnership model of community support. Now, this is the title because we're not developing this program uh, on our own, but in partnership with local organizations who are closer to people who need support. So what is it this program actually aims to achieve? It aims to um, give the opportunity to improve living conditions in uh, households, which has to do with funding of small microcredit, which uh, at no interest rate, zero interest. Uh, we work with uh, local communities 
um, which is usually an NGO which knows the local community. And they have ob direct observations, impressions of what people need. They can just directly go there and see what, what exactly it is that people need. Our experience has shown that very often there's someone coming and saying, my wife wants the new wallpaper because it's uh, falling off. And when we actually go and see why the wallpaper is, wall, uh, is falling off, we see that actually it's the roof that's leaking. And if we uh, don't renovate the roof, the wallpaper will fall back off. So these NGOs also offer expert advice to people because uh, people often don't know how to renovate their home. And uh, one thing we do with these families is we do trainings. We have three types of trainings. One is uh, family budget management, something people are uh, surprised uh, when we see what their yearly income is. It turns out almost no family knows what their yearly income is. They perhaps know what they're going to get this week, this month, but not throughout the year. They have very often seasonal income, and when you calculate their annual income, uh, they're scared when they realize how much money they manage per year. Usually these are families who are really in need of housing. You know that the situation is the worst with uh, the Roma, but also there are uh, ethnic Bulgarian families and all sorts of ethnic groups who are in need and we've developed criteria for choosing uh, families with low income who have no access to bank institutions and also families who have kids and responsibilities who have little children. And this is part of the focus of our program to help families with kids. Um, also, we um, offer incentives to the communities themselves. We have grant, grants for activities offered by the community, which might be initiatives that have to do with the improvement of, uh, uh, for example, um, the education of their children. Um, so we have energy efficiency trainings also measures on uh, what can be done to improve the energy efficiency of a building, but also soft measures aiming to change the behavior of people who uh, live in that home. And the third type of training is training on house maintenance, the different systems and installations in the home, plus an important aspect for that community how to build our homes legally, what the legal requirements are. Uh, so we try to uh, stimulate that type of activity also. Also, what I would like to add has to do with how exactly the model works. We have, as I already said, local partners. Currently, those are seven local partners in seven different towns who also operate on the regional level, working with families not only in that town, but throughout the region in uh, villages or other nearby towns. They have a commission that selects the family, the families, a uh, representative of, of Habitat is in that commission. They check the families. Um, they do um, a survey. Uh, also, they uh, check um, what their sources of income is. And the final result is 
we come up with, um, we uh, decide uh, how much uh, we're going to credit them with. And now I'm not going to go into this stuff because it's too detailed, but this is general data on the number of uh, loans, um, the number of families, the number of children. This is between 2014 and 2019. You see it's grown by almost one and a half million for um, home improvements. Uh, I mentioned home mediation. although I didn't actually call it that. Uh, it's what I um, mentioned assessing household needs. Now, how does the model work? Families, once they're selected, get a loan, uh, not more than 800 lev, 400 euro, which might seem very little, but uh, it's acceptable to those families. The average loan we've given is actually 560 lev, um, 280 euro. And what is important is that you can take out a second or a third, fourth loan. So step by step, you can really improve your home. The improvements that are done in homes are different. Around 30% are energy efficiency measures. That means changing windows, uh, installing insulation, insulating roofs. What's important in this case is that all these families that get these small loans uh, with zero interest is that these are loans. These are families with low income, but our por portfolio shows that a 97 or 98 percent of the loans are returned. Uh, these are families with very low income, but they are, uh, they behave very well. They do return their loans. And perhaps the uh, opportunity to take out a second and third loan is um, stimulates them. And if you have 10 families who have returned their loans, you have uh, funds that can then be given to other families. So it's a model that uh, is working pretty well on the community level with people who know each other uh, and that also stimulates them to return their loans. To. But uh, the mo most important thing is the role of our local partners who are respected by the local community. They know the people they're working with and they have the mechanisms to um, impact them. Um, of course, we try to um, increase the uh, authority of these local organizations because they are truly able to improve the quality of life of these families and that adds to that their authority. Annually, we uh, fund this uh, project which gives the opportunity for um, the development of local communities which is an additional um, incentive to everyone who takes part in this project. And our experience shows that low income families which have no chance of getting a loan from a bank do pay back their loans. Of course, these are small loans. Maybe that's the m most important thing, giving small loans, zero interest, so they can improve their homes step by step, get a second, a third loan, pay them back step by step. And so our experience has made clear that 
loans do work with uh, low-income families, whereas uh, full funding, 100% funding, as Gennady said, is inefficient. One, we can't actually afford it, even in pilot projects, I think it's a mistake, simply because uh, if it were 50% funding, it would mean uh, we would have done double what we did, and we would have obtained double the results. So we think that new mechanisms that are going to be developed and applied in any program with any goal uh, should envisage co-funding for people who do not have access to loans from banks. Those people need our support because, as I said, Agenda 2030, eradicating poverty means eradicating poverty, not just giving people bread, but uh, giving them access to resources, to all sorts of resources, including financial resources. Microfunding is an engagement on to all member states who have signed Agenda 2030, including Bulgaria. So we need to insist uh, that our government give this type of funding because it is efficient it uh, can achieve a lot in the direction of uh, the goal of energy efficiency. I'll stop here. Uh, I, don't, I know we're running short on time. We don't have any more presentations, I think, so maybe it's time for questions and comments. I would like to ask uh, Ms. Todorova for about one of the instruments that she mentioned, uh, an instrument with microfinancing. If you could explain uh, this scheme. Thank you for your question. The current microfinancing scheme is um, under Operation and Program uh, Human Resources Development. It's up to 25,000 uh, euro for individual microcredit. And uh, there is a, a period uh, zero um, rate of period. So it is aimed at vulner vulnerable groups of people, people who cannot get a bank loan, young people, people without credit history, different groups. Um, the focus is uh, specifically on them. And group B are everyone else for whom the financial parameters are still better than the market parameters, but not as good as for the vulnerable groups. So we work with partners as well, or intermediaries, we call them, because we are choosing them. Um, but but Microfund is one of the of, of our partners, um, as well as his credit. They have offices all over Bulgaria in the different regional towns. So. We, through our partners, we have a branch network. And recently, another bank uh, became a pa part of our micro investment uh, instrument, first investment bank. And you can could ask in their branches about microcredits with European uh, funding uh, under a human resources operational program. It's not zero uh, rate. Um, but uh, it's uh, the, the conditions are much better than the general market conditions. The interest rate is quite low. And uh, I hope that uh, this would contribute to the development of a segment of people who otherwise would not be able to obtain loans. 
you could um, find them in these branches, but uh, and you could also ask us via email or by phone, and we'll provide you with contacts. Thank you. Uh, we'll leave the microphone here because we have several more questions we that we got online. Mr. Vasilislatev is asking whether the fund envisions funding um, on about changing uh, the heating systems. You don't have such an instrument. No specific instrument we don't have about this, but within the frameworks of uh, the energy efficiency instruments, um, it could uh, be a part of a renovation program, a, 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 a reno renovation project. As I've mentioned, we have uh, instruments for single families, uh, house, single family households and student dorms. There's room for other projects uh, in our fund for urban development, but the segment there is about more serious infrastructural projects, but we encourage uh, the applicants to have uh, energy efficiency component in them. And we hope that uh, the instrument that uh, is that targets enterprises will be on the market through the banks soon. And uh, we hope the opportunities will be quite flexible in terms of what enterprises need as um, energy efficiency, as renewable energy sources, and other measures that would improve their parameters in terms of resources. And a question from Natalia Dimitrova. It's not addressed at anyone specifically, but if anyone knows, are there uh, legislatory barriers or legislation that would help uh, such measures or programs for improving the air uh, quality. It's for my presentation, this question, but uh, it's, uh, I, can't, I, don't, I can't answer. Banks are regulated seriously. European funding is also regulated. State aid as well. There are different requirements for uh, permissibility of applicants, projects, and investments. So it's quite hard due to the European support for me to be able to promise anything. But maybe the NGOs and other organizations, or maybe through through the budget and partner organizations, there could be lighter forms for improving the situation. Maybe if we don't call them funds, but rather municipalities call them programs uh, to support improving living conditions in households or uh, encouraging energy efficiencies of uh, buildings, I'm sure that uh, they could think of an approach so that municipalities manage certain amount of funding and encourage measures for improving the air quality uh, that could be applied by households. I'm almost sure that such mechanism could be applied by uh, the municipality and there could be a way to do it. But we could always think of uh, why that would not be possible, like the devil's advocate. Uh, Desi Mihovo with a question for Asia. Could you share materials, uh, stories of people who, for, for people who would like to recommend such, um, uh, such projects, uh, such programs? I'm not sure that I understand the question, but there is a lot of information on our website, HFH. Dot bg you could find um, numerous examples anyone who wants we could uh, provide more information more detailed information or we disseminate information about what we do through our local partners but we are open for communication with 
anyone who has interest in working with us or promoting us. Great. So um, we encourage Desi and anyone else who would like to learn more to check out your website. So I guess this presentation, even though it's outdated, no, no, this is not, this was not the presentation for this event. It's uh, for another one, but uh, there, there's a more up to date one, but I don't have it. Uh, anyone in the hall who would like to ask something? Felix? Yeah, this is a question to you, Gnadi. Um, I'm kind of asking this out into the blue uh, um, a little bit, but um, the topic wasn't raised today. Um, uh, carbon pricing in the non-ETS sector, um, is there something like this being discussed in Bulgaria at the moment? Or do you think that this is something that should be discussed? Because uh, just, to, just, just to name it, it's currently being introduced in Germany uh, and there are ideas at expanding this to a European level. Um, at the moment, um, our non-ETS target for the country for 2030 is unfortunately zero. So Bulgaria has absolutely no incentive to, um, to uh, consider something. And I'm sure that the government would avoid the topic if they could. Uh, but with the new level of, of ambition that might be introduced by the end of the year when it comes to um, greenhouse gas emission targets, we might have to start the debate, but let's see. Um, and I'll, I'm going to be very interested to, to know more how this um, initiative is moving in, in Germany. Yeah. Uh, you would be pioneering it. Um, let me see, any last questions coming? No, we don't have um, any other questions from the room. I see Jana Mausen. But Jana, I, I have to move you over here because you'll be very close to the, to the loudspeakers. It's going to be painful for the ears. <laughs> okay, it's actually not really a question, but it's uh, thinking about uh, what I heard today. I'm thinking of the initiative that uh, we are now getting involved in, and that's working with uh, cities, uh, municipalities in the Czech Republic um, within the uh, idea to initiate, uh, so these cities join the governance of uh, mayors. And I was actually curious if, uh, and because within that, that's all about energy efficiency, so I was wondering if there is actually uh, any experience that uh, you would like to actually share. Uh, can, you, can you try to simplify or redo the question? Okay. Uh, covenant of mayors. Uh, I, I was just wondering what cities are actually in Bulgaria, perhaps members, and you know what is the experience in using this uh, vehicle for uh, actually energy efficiency uh, projects. But are you talking about the Elena Fund or generally? No. no, no. no. Okay. I, I think I think Asi is getting better. Your your question. Um, the be. Uh, Maybe our colleagues from the municipal um, network for energy efficiency would respond, give a better response. But yes, in Bulgaria, there, there are um, municipalities who work actively in this direction. On the, the official website of the Covenant of uh, Mayors, there's a list of all the municipalities who have prepared the respective plans and work towards achieving them. There are, you know that there are special procedures and I think there are over 20 municipalities who are actively participating in this initiative. Uh, you, you know that uh, it developed into more effective um, plans for 
um, sustainable energy. A lot of municipalities work on this topic. For sure, Sofia, Burgas, and Gabru, but not only, there are smaller municipalities who are ambitious and actively working, and they're preparing their new action plans. So, yes, there are, and the list is on the Covenant of Mayors. So trying to update their sustainable energy action plans because some of them are members for many years. But regarding the financial instruments, because I can't escape that we're in, was your question anyhow related to financial instruments and something uh, connected to the Covenant of Mayors? Okay. Um, well, I think that we are closing this forum right on time. Uh, and um, of course, I, I need to do a little bit of thanksgiving. Uh, I thank everyone. You've been, uh, you've been real survivors today. Um, everyone offline here in this room and everyone online who managed to, to have the day in front of uh, the screens, which is even more tiring, I can imagine, um, than, uh, uh, than, than being seated the whole day. Um, I would like to thank also the European Climate Foundation uh, for providing us with uh, the financial assistance to be able to um, create this forum for yet another year. And I hope that we'll be lucky to continue this tradition uh, from, from now on. Um, great thanks, although they, are already, um, uh, they have already taken everything out and they are not present anymore, to uh, Maria's world, Svetutna Maria, um, who did the catering today. Um, uh, another two survivors in the team are our interpreters. Uh, please turn back. Big applause for them. So, um, so th these are Martin Petrov and Denitsa Abadjieva, uh, the people that managed the whole, for the whole day to translate the whole uh, event and provide two channels in Bulgarian and in English during the, the streaming. Um, our technical people, special uh, thank you also to Vladimir Ilchev from uh, Unitrade Electronics uh, and um, to Dimitr from Octoplay. Um, thanks also to um, the management of this hotel. They, they didn't cut us the last moment despite all the, um, the situation that uh, uh, was rising up minute after minute um, in the last few days. Um, great thanks also to our colleagues from um, Greenpeace Bulgaria. Uh, who uh, provided us uh, their Zoom channel for, um, for, for some of the connections uh, during the day uh, and also for playing this invisible role when we were unable to cope immediately um, with this otherwise very intuitive uh, tool. And um, the team that managed to uh, make this um, event happen, um, I have to um, give great thanks to, um, to Radi. Rodostina uh, Slavkova, my colleague from, from the cold team, uh, and to Ivailo Popov, who um, got sick the last moment, but was basically, again, an, inv an um, invisible um, help during the entire event, and he was, uh, he was online all the time. Uh, thank you, too, because I'm sure you were ready to throw heavy stuff at me, in heavy things at me, uh, for the past two weeks that were quite hard with the preparation of this event. You should have done it because now everybody's going to be home office and you won't get the chance for a few weeks. Um, Asya, great thanks to you because I don't think that I would have been um, able to, to manage um, uh, to, to manage this uh, forum without you. Uh, now, um, please stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, we will uh, keep following the situation and uh, we promise that uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch with everyone who has any doubts whatsoever. I know that it's a topic that we don't like to bring back, but still um, we'll, we'll try to uh, keep you best informed if there would be anything you need to be um, aware or careful of. Uh, now in half an hour. Many thanks to Gennady Kunderev <laughs> for all his job. <laughs> Great job. Now, um, 
because of the scale down of the event, I think we have some budget leftovers. And if ECF wouldn't mind, I would like to invite everyone for another small networking event in half an hour. Let's get together in the lobby. We're still trying to choose the exact place, but maybe go together, have a drink, and whoever has any strength left, uh, we, can, uh, we can meet and uh, continue uh, to chit-chat. Thank you.